Shall we now turn to uh, the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 1, and we shall read a few verses beginning with verse 18. Verse 18. <clears throat> Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And the title this evening is Jesus, the Firstborn of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, the firstborn of the Holy Ghost. Now, from this account, it is clear that Mary did not have any relationship with man to become pregnant with a child. She became pregnant with a child by the working of the Holy Ghost. As the verse 18 tells us, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, Joseph, who was engaged to Mary, was told that Mary has conceived a child and this child is of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 20. And the angel said to Joseph, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, when the angel gave Mary the news about God's plan that she would conceive a son, Mary questioned the angel, and rightly so. And she said, and we find this in Luke chapter 1, verse 34 onward, How shall this be? She said, seeing I know not a man. I have no intimate relationship with any man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So that which was conceived in the womb of Mary, a virgin, was the work of the Holy Ghost. Now the question can be asked, was the Son of God that was growing in Mary's womb never existed before? Or did the Son of God already exist before the Holy Ghost worked this glorious miracle in the womb of the Virgin Mary. The evidence of the scripture points us to the fact that Jesus already, the Son of God, already existed before Mary could conceive him by the Holy Ghost in her womb. For example, Jesus himself says that he was before Abraham was. John chapter 8, verse 58. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And in chapter 17 of the Gospel of John, Jesus says, uh, in 17 verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So even before the world was created, the Lord Jesus Christ was with the Father, existing with him. 
And the prophecy in Micah, talking about Jesus, speaks, saying in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. This is a prophecy of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is spoken of as one whose going forth, whose origin is from everlasting. In fact, the scriptures clearly say that all things were created through Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 onward, who, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. In the Gospels, Jesus himself says that he is come from above. He says, he was sent by the Father. If Jesus is come from above and if he is sent by his Father, this means Jesus was with the Father before he was formed in the womb of Mary. Apostle John begins his gospel with these words, and this is talking about Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So we are trying to establish the fact that Jesus existed before He was conceived in the womb of Mary. And the Lord further makes John write in John 1, chapter 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Prophet Isaiah is made to prophesy of the child to be born, showing that he is the everlasting Father. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For unto us a child is born. It's talking about Christ Jesus. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, why everlasting Father? Well, Jesus says that the Father and I are one. John chapter 10, verse 30, I and the Father are one. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is the exact image of the person of the Father, of the Heavenly Father. He is the exact image of his eternal Father. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and express the exact image of his person, the image of the Father. The word image here means precise reproduction in every respect. This means the way Jesus thinks, the way Jesus acts, the way he conducts himself, his character, his attribute, his everything is equal, fits in exactly to his Father. So he and the Father are one. 
if only our Muslim friends and all the cults like the JW and others would look closely at the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to speak about Jesus to them, they would not make Jesus into a creature created by God like any angels or only just like any man. The Father and the Son are equal. If the Word of God is saying this, who are we as humans to question this? Now, how Jesus, the second person of the triune God, became man, we don't know. But this much we know that God willed and worked that the eternal Son of God, the image of the invisible God, be mingled by the Holy Ghost with Mary's seed and Jesus the God be formed into a human being. Jesus the Son of God took flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is rightly called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And thus Jesus became the firstborn of the Holy Spirit among all creation or over all creation. Now, what is the significance, the uniqueness of this birth of Jesus Christ? The significance is of the greatest importance in human history. The significance was that with the birth of Jesus, born of the Holy Spirit, it would be the beginning of a new race of mankind. This was the beginning of the birth of a man, not born of man, but born of the Holy Ghost, born of God. It was revealed to David, the psalmist, by God saying in Psalm 89, verse 27, Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. And Christ being the king, the Lord Jesus Christ has made his people born again of the Spirit. He has made us kings and priests to our God. By the very nature of Jesus' birth, he stands above all that are born on this earth. The Son of God who existed from eternity with the Father was spirit, for God is spirit. But he took flesh, being born of a woman. He became God's first born as a human. So we may ask, what was the mission of the Son of God who was with the Father from eternity, that he should be born of the Holy Ghost? What was the mission of the Son of God whose origin was from everlasting, but now born of the Holy Ghost and made fully human? The mission of the Son of God was to make a new race, a new creation, a new group of people born of the Holy Spirit like Him, born of God like Him. This means the way Jesus thinks, the way Jesus acts, the way He conducts Himself, his character, his attributes, his everything. Sorry, this was the covenant rather. I just went on to, uh, yeah. So this was the covenant uh, that God had made with the people of Israel and with the people of the world, knowing that men are born in sin and the heart of man is desperately wicked, continually. God himself moved to make a covenant, to make a covenant, you see. And so we find 
in our first reading that we read, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, a new heart also I will give you, the Lord said to them, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them, and do them. The Lord God promised to prophet Joel again in Joel chapter 2, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens, handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Now why would the Lord God pour out his spirit upon the people of this earth? This was so that they will be born of the Holy Spirit. And by the new birth of the Spirit given to these whom God has called, they would begin to live by the standards of the Lord Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would confirm those that are born of the Holy Ghost to the image of the Son of God who became the firstborn among many brethren. He was the firstborn of the Holy Ghost and then God added many more, many more and continue to do so by giving men and women a new birth of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God in Romans chapter 8 verse 29 says, For whom he did foreknew, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, now on any person that will be found in the new heaven and the new earth created by God will be and must be a person born of God, born of the Holy Spirit. They must, be the, must have the seal of the Holy Spirit upon them. They must be dressed in the garments of the Holy Spirit, which is holiness, righteousness, love, goodness, kindness, gentleness, peace, joy, self-control, patience, faith, meekness, and so on. The new birth given by the Holy Spirit is to be the hallmark of this new race that the Son of God came to establish. His kingdom would be filled with men and women that are born of the Holy Spirit, born of God. Therefore, Jesus makes it clear to Nicodemus, one of the religious leader of Jesus' time. Jesus told him in John chapter 3, verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A person in order to enter into the kingdom of Christ must become a new creation, created in the likeness of Jesus Christ, who was born of the Holy Spirit. This means those that are born of the Holy Spirit will no more walk in the flesh, but after the Spirit. And those that have got the Spirit of Christ, there is no condemnation for them. There is no condemnation. They are passed from condemnation into eternal life. Now knowing that Jesus, the Son of God, became man by the working of the Holy Spirit, that he was born of the Holy Ghost, there is none, there is none that have claimed to be so, and neither will there ever be so. Yes, of course, Satan can and he will create a myth and 
will indoctrinate the minds of men to produce such character, but only as a fictitious personality. There is none that has come in the flesh, in the history of mankind, that has claimed to have, been, have taken the birth of the Holy Spirit and lived a perfect life from birth and done the miracles only God, that God can do. There is no evidence of any such mythological gods that have caused humans to be born of the Holy Ghost and made them into a new creation. There is none whatsoever. Did Krishna come to bring about a new creation? and give humans the Spirit of God? No. As Muhammad promised mankind that Allah would give people His Spirit and that people will then on walk in the Spirit of God? No. There is no evidence either in the Quran nor in the lives of the Muslims who can say that I have received the Spirit of God and I am a new creation now. If you ask them, if you die today, will you go to heaven? They say, Inshallah. Huh? If God will, God knows. They don't know, they cannot know. Because no one can know unless you have the Spirit of Christ in you and being born again of the Holy Spirit. Did Buddha say that he is born of the Holy Spirit and that he has come to establish or to inaugurate the kingdom of God and to usher in men and women into the kingdom of God by giving them a new birth through the Holy Spirit? No. No. But look at the evidence that Jesus has shown about himself being born of the Holy Ghost. He was God, but became man, born of the Holy Ghost. He lived a perfect life. He did mighty miracles that only God can perform. And being born of the Holy Ghost, he alone possessed the fullness of God. The fullness of God. He alone is given the authority to give his spirit to those that he wants to give and make them born of God, born of the Holy Spirit. And in order that he imparts his spirit to the people of the earth whom his father chose, Jesus, the Son of God, had to fulfill the justice of God. According to the justice of God, blood had to be shed of the one that wanted to save the sinner from dying. And such a saviour had to be perfect, born of the Holy Spirit, born without any sin, and live without any sin till the end. And according to God's justice, the sins of many to be saved had to be laid upon this perfect Lamb of God, the unblemished saviour. And this saviour, the one who wanted to save the sinner had to shed his blood and die so that his life could be transferred into the sinner to make him clean and be filled with the spirit of the Savior. Only God was fit to fulfill this justice this justice. So the Son of God became man. He mingled with the seed of the virgin. He fulfilled the conditions laid down by the justice of God. The very Son of God that gave the laws became subject under the law and fulfilled the justice of God for the salvation of mankind. And Jesus became the firstborn of the Holy Ghost to destroy sin and to destroy Satan and to have victory over death and the grave. And so he rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And Jesus, the Son of God, born of the Holy Ghost, is now given the authority to call those that he wants 
to the Father and impart to them his Spirit as the Father had promised and make them born of the Holy Ghost. And those that are born of the Holy Ghost are made to become like the Lord Jesus Christ. And this process has begun here and now. So they live no more by the flesh, but by the Spirit. Dear brethren, although our outward body is perishing, our inward, inward man is being renewed day by day, so much so that we are being changed into the image of Christ. And as we obey his Father, his word, and imitate Jesus, we grow from glory to glory. And the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Jesus is the firstborn of the Holy Ghost, and we whom he has given the Holy Spirit, he has made us his brethren. He has made us his brethren, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. As Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 50, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. The Lord Jesus Christ calls the Heavenly Father my Father, and he says, your Father, my God, and your God. And after his resurrection, Jesus told Mary Magdalene, in John chapter 20, verse 17, Touch me not, she, he said to her, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, unto my God and your God. It is through the Holy Spirit that is given to us, we cry, Abba, Father. What a privilege the Lord God has given to us. How high he has raised us up, raised us up to live a heavenly life, to be the citizens of the heaven, to be the children, his very own children. And, son, and all this because of his son, Jesus Christ. The Son of God became the firstborn of the Holy Ghost so that we could also be made the son of, sons of God. Let us pray. O gracious Father, what a wonderful thing Thou hast done in our lives through Thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. O God, our Father, we thank Thee for having made us into a new creation. And this through Thy Spirit, which Thou hast poured into our hearts. O Lord, we thank Thee for having made us enter into Thy kingdom, the kingdom of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, born of the Holy Ghost, the firstborn over all creation, and that we are attached to him. O oh Lord, we thank thee and praise thee that thou hast made us thy people. And we pray that we will do all, all things, O oh Lord, to maintain this relationship, dear Father. And we ask of thee that thou will pour into our hearts grace upon grace and that we become submissive to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>